Good day, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back, spiritual messengers. In today's video, we will hear from Luz de Maria. The Antichrist is the personification of evil, not just a symbol. The Antichrist will be a man possessed by Satan who seeks to destroy everything that God values. Initially, he will act humble, but he is actually extremely proud. The Bible refers to him as the man of sin, and he will do seemingly supernatural works and marvels, even claiming divinity, despite the fact that he is not divine. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he would initially disguise his actual nature by providing a facade that is not what it appears. The Antichrist will be as smart and cruel as Superman's nemesis, Lex Luthor. Historical leaders such as Hitler, Stalin, Genghis Khan, Nero, Caligula, and Herod, all known for their brutality, would pale in comparison to the Antichrist, whose malevolence will outstrip theirs. He will be history's ultimate villain, defined by his unrivaled hatred for gods, plans, and people, as well as the immense pain he will inflict on the earth. Daniel chapter 2 describes a vision of a statue constructed of many elements including gold, silver, and bronze. Daniel saw that each element of the statue symbolized future kingdoms. The statue's feet, specifically its ten toes, represent a ten-part kingdom of the end days, which the Antichrist will reign. Daniel 7 predicts that the Antichrist will emerge from ten kings. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Some understand this to suggest that he will dominate ten areas or nations, possibly forging a ten-nation confederacy rooted on Europe, similar to a reborn Roman Empire. Others believe he would build on the legacy of ten renowned leaders from history, such as Alexander the Great and Nebuchadnezzar. Prophecy predicts that as the Antichrist rises to power, three nations, monarchs, or components of his system will revolt. However, according to Daniel, this revolt will be suppressed, resulting in the development of a powerful new world government, with the Antichrist as its undisputed ruler. Though interpretations differ, it is evident that the Antichrist will eventually rule all major global systems, rather than just one nation or continent. Religion, economy, government, military, and everything. The Antichrist will be handsome, charismatic, politically smart, and wise, and he will use these characteristics to achieve his goals. Through smart talks and diplomatic tactics, the Antichrist will gain global support and ascend to power. World leaders will support his rise, viewing him as a man of peace. However, despite his grandiose promises, his true goal is to destroy and kill millions. Many people interpret Daniel chapter 9 as indicating that the rise of the Antichrist coincides with the beginning of the prophet's 70-week prophecy. A prophetic week equals seven years. This places his rise at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week which corresponds to the seven years of tribulation predicted in the book of Revelation. Most Bible scholars believe that the Antichrist will appear on the world stage after negotiating a peace treaty between Israel and its opponents. This peace accord, mentioned in Daniel 9, initiates the seven-year tribulation, not a conflict or the rapture. The accord will bring peace and security and it may even allow Israel to restore the third temple. However, this tranquility will be short-lived. Initially, the Antichrist will be hailed as a knowledgeable and magnificent leader who brings remedies to global problems. He is predicted to emerge amid a period of turmoil, such as a war, a new pandemic, a financial collapse, or the rapture of the church. Despite the chaos, he will pitch himself as the rescuer with plans and promises to restore order and calm. His lies will be believable, and a weary world desperate for hope will follow him. Give me control, and I will bring peace and order to the world. He promises. Despotic nations will hand over authority. 
to this self-proclaimed man of peace if they believe his ruse. In time, the Antichrist will control all key global systems and establish a one-world government. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse as detailed in Revelation 6, provide a summary of the tribulation period and the Antichrist's role in these events. However, it is critical to make an important distinction. Daniel chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9, Matthew 24, 1. Thessalonians 5, 2, Thessalonians 2. And Revelation 6 and 11 all refer to the Antichrist as a single man, commonly denoted with a capital A. This title is specific to one individual. In addition to writing the book of Revelation, the Apostle John composed three epistles. In 1 and 2, John. He uses the term Antichrist in lowercase to indicate anyone who rejects God's will. Far in John's time, there were many Antichrists, and there would be far more in the latter times. Thus, the term Antichrist has two connotations according to Scripture. The lowercase antichrist refers to humans who purposefully work against God's will. But the capital antichrist refers to one specific figure indwelt by Satan who will come to power during the tribulation period. Let me now explain what the Bible says about this guy. The antichrist is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Satan will infiltrate the antichrist and endow him with unparalleled deception and destructive talents. The Antichrist will perform miraculous signs and marvels, tricking the people with demonic power. By the middle of the tribulation period, he will pretend to be God. Although Daniel 7 verse 24 to 25 predicts that the Antichrist will be a mandev. Philippians 2 verse 2 states that Jesus was both 100% human and 100% divine, a unique fusion known as the hypostatic union. Jesus was the first and last to have this dual nature. In contrast, the Antichrist will claim divinity and demand to be worshipped as God. According to Revelation 13, he will get an apparent mortal wound to the head before appearing to revive in a warped copy of Jesus' resurrection. Despite his claims, the Antichrist will remain human and possessed by Satan. Satan, as a destroyer and mimic rather than a creator, will recreate the Holy Trinity through the dragon, Satan, the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Another human backing the Antichrist. According to Daniel 8, the Antichrist will be an exceptional guy with a ferocious countenance. He will be arrogant, full of confidence, and capable of scaring many others into submission. He will initially present himself as a humble man of peace, but his actual character will be savage and vicious, ready to destroy anything that comes in his path of absolute dominance. The Bible also states that he will have a partner, the false prophet, who would support the Antichrist's ascent to power, and most likely establish a new global religion. In the end days, Jesus described this figure as the abomination of desolation. According to Daniel 8.25, the Antichrist will promote deception by mastering fraud, dishonesty, and treason. While the Antichrist's negative characteristics are not unique, many people have lied, deceived, and despised God. His reach and impact will be unparalleled. According to Revelation 6 verse 8, a quarter of humanity will perish during the first four seal judgments which take place in the first half of the tribulation. The Antichrist's deceptions will cause tremendous pain and death throughout the tribulation period. If humanity turned to Christ and rejected Satan, the tribulation would not happen. As a result, at the halfway point of the tribulation, the Antichrist will have spilled the blood of billions. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your super thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.